Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, whatever you're watching this. Uh, this is for Wednesday, April 1st, which is April Fool's Day. I know that's always a big day uh, at school, April Fool's Day. Hey, look, Mr. Bray, there's a big spider in the back of the room. April Fool's, really, really, really. Anyway, if you remember um, what Mrs. Young was talking about, we are doing a sports theme today. So I'm representing my Cincinnati Reds, woo! And also the Indiana Hoosiers, woo! Now, Miss Young and I will definitely agree on the Indiana Hoosiers. However, I don't think that we agree on the same baseball team. So anyway, when we uh, meet for the uh, Google chat at 11 o'clock today, um, maybe you'll be wearing some sports stuff. You don't have to, that's just a fun option. Anyway, chapter three in Boxcar Children, Surprise Island. Yes, yesterday was uh, about housekeeping, and today is called The Garden. So let's jump in, shall we? Jesse was not the first one to wake up the next day. At six o'clock, Henry went very quietly to her room and opened the swinging door to let watch out. The dog came very quietly and followed Henry as he walked out of the barn to the spring. Henry stood still and looked around. He was right. It was just as he thought last night. There was a garden with rows and rows of vegetables in it. I wonder if this garden belongs to Captain Daniel, thought Henry. Then he heard a little noise and turned around, and a young man was coming towards him. His head was down as he walked. Henry looked at him carefully. Henry thought the man looked very sad, but he forgot that when the stranger looked up and smiled. I'm Joe, he said. I'm the handyman. How do you like your garden? Mine? Is it mine? He asked. You can see there's the picture of the two. There's Joe and Henry meeting. Obviously, Henry's a little confused, isn't he, about why he's saying that the garden was his. Let's read on to find out. Yes, there are two gardens on the island. One belongs to Captain Daniel, and this one is yours. How did that happen? Asked Henry. I just got here. Well, your grandfather knew that you would, would rather plant it yourself. If you did, it would be too late to start planting when you got out of school. So he told Captain Daniel, or asked him, to please plant it. And he said you would weed and look after the garden when you came. <laughs> I will, said Henry, opening one of the peas. Peas are big enough to eat right now. Yes, said Joe. The peas are just right, but nothing else will be ready until later. Haven't you ever eaten tiny vegetables? We did once. We pulled them because there were too many of them in the garden. It makes me hungry when I remember how good they were. Do you guys remember that? In the original Boxcar Children, when Henry was working for Dr. Moore and he was he went and he, he took the garden and they had onions and they had uh, all kinds of different things and he got to pull the small ones and the carrots and pull them out and they took them home and they ate them. And it was so delicious, if you remember. The girls make such good things to eat out of almost nothing. The other children appeared at just that minute, but it was Benny who spoke first. Hello, Joe, he said. You look like Joe. Is this your garden? No, it's yours. Oh, no, it isn't, said Benny. It is ours, Benny, said Henry. Joe and Captain Daniel started it for us. You may help me weed it. Not now. I want my breakfast. We'll eat soon, said Jesse, smiling at Joe. This is Violet, and I'm Jesse. Joe said, yes, Captain Daniel told me all your names, and I feel as if I know you all. Oh, look, cried Benny. Peas. I'd like peas for dinner. <laughs> Our dinner is all planned, then, said Jesse. We'll have peas, and everyone will help pick and shell them. They walked slowly back to the barn, leaving Joe at the woodpile. He's nice, isn't he, said Violet, as they walked along. They all agreed that Joe was very nice. After the four bowls and the bread and milk were set on the table, the children sat down carefully on the packing boxes. Then Jesse said, I think that after breakfast, we'd better make a plan for the summer. Every day we must go swimming and every day we must cook something at noon. After dinner, we must either make something or go exploring. Make something such as a dip dish cover? I suppose, said Henry, looking at Violet. That's not a bad idea, said, cried Violet. I will make you a cupboard this very day, said Henry. Let's wash the dishes and pick the peas now, said Jesse. Henry can make the dish covered while we shell the peas. We'll take the dishpan to hold them. On the way to the spring, with their bowls and their dishpan, they passed Joe at the woodpile. 
Henry, called Joe, stopping his work, did you know that Captain Daniel goes over to the mainland every morning for groceries? If you need any groceries, you may leave your order on a piece of paper in the box on the dock. Captain Daniel will bring your order back to the island before dinner. Oh, how nice, said Jesse. I was wondering what to do about milk. Ours is almost gone. Just write what you want and I will take it down, said Joe. Here is my pen. Jesse and Henry sat down facing each other on the rocks to think. We must have butter for the peas, said Jesse, writing it down on a piece of paper from Joe's pocket. We want bread and four bottles of milk every day, all summer long. Sugar and some dog bread for watch. Good, said Henry. I almost forgot about watch. I want to go with Joe and see the little box, said Joe. Take, said Benny, taking Joe's hands. Let him go. I'll wash his bowl for him and we can pick peas without him. Then the older children set to work. They picked enough peas for dinner, but lots of peas were left for later. Enough for two more dinners, said Henry, very pleased, and more will grow. Now I will start the cupboard while you girls shell the peas. How many places will you need to put things, Jesse? One shelf for spoons and things, said Jesse, and one shelf for dishes, said Violet, and one shelf for pans and kettles, said Jesse, and an extra shelf for groceries. The two girls sat in the open door of the barn shelling peas, and Henry began to build the cupboard. And this is a wonderful picture. Look at this. Look, you can see all that. Yeah. You can see the two girls, Violet and Jesse, they're shelling peas. Have you ever done that before? Have you ever shelled peas? I have to admit, I have never shelled peas, although I have picked green beans many, many times with my mom and also my wife as well. And you can see Henry over there. He's making the cupboard. He's working very hard. Looks like he's got a hammer and he's got his toolbox down there. Looks like, like he's very, very busy at work, having a very, very good time. Doesn't that look like a fun place to visit and go? What time shall we go swimming, asked Jesse. We could go in right before lunch, said Henry. Or if you were too busy cooking, we could swim before breakfast and maybe again at four o'clock. Fine, said Jesse. Before breakfast when we feel like it, four o'clock when we don't. Maybe both and go to bed at eight o'clock or as soon as it gets dark. Oh dear, do y'all have to go to bed so early, asked Violet. You'll want to, believe me, said Henry. You wait and see. When the peas were shelled, Benny came running back. It's a big box, Violet. It has a little door and it will hold lots of bottles of milk and everything. I like to open the door and take out the things. What did you take out? Asked Violet. Oh, Captain Daniel let me take out some letters and packages. Maybe you'd like to do that every day, Benny, said Henry. You may take the order down to the box. Then you may get the groceries and letters when they come. I'd like to do that very much. Captain Daniel was there and he said he's bringing our groceries soon. Then I can open the little door and get them. Sorry, I should have said that in my Benny, Benny voice. That's fine, said Henry. He was glad to please Benny and get a little work done at the same time. Come and hold this door for me, will you? Oh, our cupboard has doors, said Violet. She watched Henry put two pieces of heavy cloth on the doors so they would open and shut. The morning passed very quickly and Jesse lighted the little stove, boiled some water in the kettle and put in the peas. When they were done, she added some salt and filled four dishes with peas. On the top of each dish, she put a little piece of butter. There was no need to call anyone, for the whole family and the dog stood by watching her. Sounds like my dogs. My dogs, Ethel and Lucy, when I'm making anything at all, they're right down there looking up at me, like, please give me some food. I imagine that's what Watch is doing as well. Oh boy, cried Henry as he began to eat. Oh boy, cried Benny. Violet said nothing, but when her first dish was empty, she passed it for more. Now, what does that mean, she passed it for more? What do you think that means? Huh, you in the back. Oh, yes, it means <laughs> they enjoyed it. As um, my, my wife and I sometimes like to say, uh, eating speaks louder than words. In other words, if you clean your plate, it's always good to say thank you, and you always should, but you can always say thank you by cleaning off your plate as well. Anyway, we have just a little bit more of chapter three. This is what I like, said Jesse. Everything seems better when we have to work to get it. Interesting. It was fun to put white paper in the new dish cupboard and find the best places for each cup and bowl. And at one o'clock, the barn was once more in order. The cupboard was shut and the four children and their dog were ready to explore the island. 
that's the end of chapter three, but I want to talk about something. Um, Jesse said this, everything seems better when we have to work to get it. Hmm. You know, I've had to work for things before. I remember when I was young, I had to, um, uh, we had a fence, a long fence, and we needed to paint it white. And it was difficult because you had to paint both sides of it. But anyway, whenever I would paint, paint one of the strips of the fence, when I did both sides of that, and my mom and dad would inspect and say that it was good, I would earn one penny. Now it took a while to paint one of those. Now you might think, one penny, that's not very much. But it is because, you see, when I would finish 10 of those boards, I had a dime and I could take it down to the store and I could get a pack of baseball cards. And I thought that was the grandest thing ever was to buy a pack of baseball cards. And I cherished those because I worked to get them. Now, if someone would just buy me a pack of baseball cards, I probably wouldn't have appreciated it as much. It's always better when we work for something that we get. Anyway, I'll see you next time on chapter four, which is called Clamming. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Maybe one of you guys could look it up. We could talk about it tomorrow when we, um, when we meet. Or actually, it'll be today when we meet. Anyway, have a great day, and we'll talk and hopefully see you soon.